Seth DeBolt and his team of University of Kentucky horticulture researchers get pretty animated when they talk about this little weed. It's called a Rapidopsis. It's a simple little plant that has a tendency to produce a variety of mutations. It's been used by plant scientists for genetic and molecular research for years. It's one of those little genetic variations in Arapidopsis that has the UK research team so excited. Right now, most of the ethanol that's produced in the United States comes from corn, because it's much easier to extract sugars from corn seed. Unfortunately, this increased dependence on corn traditionally grown for food has potential problems. When we were, look, were looking at biofuel potential across the United States, I think there was a lot of focus on corn ethanol for some time, but that has the risk of threatening food security. And our focus is very much not to compete with food and to use as much as possible native plants that can be grown on marginal lands to come up with more environmentally sound solutions. DeBolt searched through thousands of Arapidopsis plants, hoping to find mutations that were easier to break down into sugars. Since the little weed closely resembles the makeup of many types of grasses, he had a hunch that if he found such a mutation in Arapidopsis, they could find the same genetic traits in a variety of grasses and even trees. What they actually found was beyond their expectations. We found that we could increase the digestibility or the, the rate at which the cellulose in the plant can be converted into biofuel by about 150 percent of what the normal plant can be turned into biofuel, which is a fairly dramatic increase. We were quite surprised. Now the real challenge begins. The UK horticulture team is now sharing their findings with fellow scientists in UK's departments of plant and soil sciences, biosystems and ag engineering, and the Center for Applied Energy Research. Together, they'll carry out the tests needed to identify, breed, and then provide marketable quantities of native plant seed that would provide the biofuels that can power tomorrow's cars, homes, and industries. I'm Mark Eklow reporting for Growing Kentucky.